Brothers and sisters, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that he may grant you, in accord with the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in the inner self, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the holy ones what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to accomplish far more than all we ask or imagine by the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of our Lord. Exult, you just, in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten-stringed lyre, chant his praises. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. For upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. But the plan of the Lord stands forever, the design of his heart through all generations. Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. But see, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. According to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, rather division. From now on, a household will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and the son against his father, a mother against their daughter and a daughter against her mother, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and her daughter-in-law against her mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus says, Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. 
How is it that the Prince of Peace brings division? Well, certainly the Lord wants to bring peace, but the Lord is also the way and the truth and the life. Jesus is the truth and the truth divides. Jesus is the truth and the truth divides. Either you accept the truth or you accept the lie. Either you accept what is true or you accept what is not true. And one of the main truths that brings division among people, especially Christians, is the truth that Jesus is truly present with us in the Holy Eucharist. The truth that Jesus is truly present here, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Holy Eucharist. This is a truth that has divided Christianity because many choose not to accept this truth. Many don't know about this truth. Many are doubtful about this truth and therefore they reject the truth. But the truth is that Jesus is here. And this division, this division on the truth that Jesus is present in the Eucharist was there from the beginning. If you remember in John chapter six, Jesus told them that he is the bread of life, the bread come down from heaven. And then he says, and the bread that I will give is my flesh. I'm not gonna give you bread as you know, as you think. The quote unquote bread that I will give is my flesh. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has life. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life within you. All of these words that Jesus gave to them and what ends up happening Towards the end of the chapter, John 6, verse 6, 6, the people say, this is hard. We can't do this. This is hard. And they walk away. And they walk away. They walk away from Jesus. They stop following Jesus because they could not accept this truth. The Eucharist has continued to create division. And that is our mission to help others understand this truth. And we have to start with ourselves. We have to understand this truth more and more each and every day. Because if we do not understand it, how can we help others understand it? We have to understand that Jesus is here. We have to let that knowledge that is in our head sink down and get into our heart. We can have head knowledge of this, but we have to have heart knowledge of this. So today I ask you to do something, do something to learn more about the Holy Eucharist. It could be as simple as going onto Formed and looking at some videos or some audios about the Eucharist. It could be picking up a book about the Eucharist. It could be picking up the Catechism of the Catholic Church and reading about the Eucharist. The Catechism of the Catholic Church that was given to us by John Paul II, St. John Paul II. And if you don't have a catechism, if you don't know what the catechism is, well, that's, it's a time to learn. The catechism can be found online or it can be found in hard copy has a green cover, because there's an older version that has a brown beige cover, but you want the most updated version of it, that's the one with the green cover. And if you don't know what a catechism is, then you can ask, call the office, we can tell you. Ask deacon after mass, he can tell you. Ask one of your fellow parishioners, they can tell you. The catechism is, the, is where we can turn to to find what the church teaches. So the Eucharist is a truth that divides, that brings division, because many will reject this truth and walk away. And many will try to make up their own truth. 
Well, we, we also have the Lord's Supper in our group. We also do what you do in our church. And that's false. Because if they did what we do, they'd be Catholic. But they're not. They say they're not. They're Bible church of whatever, or Christian church of whatever, or whatever they call themselves. But yet they say, well, we do the same thing you do. So it's up to us to help. Because many of these churches that are not Catholic, that are Christian but not Catholic, many of them are filled with former Catholics, filled with Catholics who have walked away because, usually because of ignorance, they just don't know that the Eucharist is here. They just don't know that Jesus is here. So it's your mission, your job, to help others know, to help them know. What are some other truths that bring division? The church's teachings on abortion, contraception, euthanasia, embry embry embryonic stem cell research, these teachings bring division because people don't want to accept the truth that these abortion, contraception, euthanasia, embryonic stem cell research, these practices are always immoral. This is what the church means when they say they are intrinsic evils. They're always immoral. There are no cases where it can be moral. The teaching on marriage. The church teaches on marriage that marriage can only be between one man and one woman for life, regardless of what the government might say. This brings division, and it can bring persecution. You can be called, you can be called, uh, you can be accused of hate speech. You hate because you're saying that marriage can only be between one man and one woman. And that's not true. We don't hate. We're just teaching what God has given to the church for us to teach. The truth brings division. And those who proclaim the truth will often be punished for speaking the truth. But we must never stop sharing and teaching the teachings of Christ. We must speak the truth when it is popular. We must speak the truth when it is not popular. We must speak the truth if we are persecuted. We must speak the truth if when we are applauded. Or when we get no response, we must continue to preach what is true. We must do this because we have entered into a time when people have started to accept lies as truth, lies which are repeated over and over and over so that people can believe. Today, let us remember that Jesus says he will bring division. He is the truth, and the truth will bring division. Some will accept, some will not accept. Some will be converted, some will be offended. The truth does not change and it has a different impact on different people. You can just think about how the sun, the sun shines down on a piece of clay and a piece of wax, the wax will be melted, the clay will be hardened. The same sun impacts in two different ways. And similarly, the truth will have an impact on us depending on how we are prepared to receive the truth. We receive according to the mode that we are prepared to receive. Therefore, let us ask the Holy Spirit to help us be more open to what is true, to be more open to know the truth, to let the truth of Christ sink down from our head into our heart so that we can know the truth and love the truth and live the truth. 
Let us not be afraid to teach and to share the teachings of Christ. Let us preach the truth in love because Jesus says the truth is what sets us free. And the truth does not change. Jesus is the truth. And therefore we say, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Praise be Jesus Christ. Praise be Mary. Praise be Joseph, now and forever. Amen. Amen. For missionaries throughout the world who suffer persecution, may the Lord grant them courage and strength, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who wield political, military, or monetary power, may the Holy Spirit direct them in the ways of justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live daily with the threat of war or other forms of violence, may God deliver them and bring peace to their lands, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are held captive by addictions, may they find recovery and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died with the mark of the sign of faith, may they bask in beneath the in the breadth and depth of God's love in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread that we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine that we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, for your sacrifice and your sight. sisters and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept the sacrifice from your people we pray O oh Lord and make what is offered for your glory in honor of St. John Paul II a means to our eternal salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with you. Right and just. It is truly right and just. 
us our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. John Paul II, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so in the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gustavo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you, the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, 
And that is spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you. I see you were already there. And unite myself only to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Un 
Let us pray. May the sacraments we have received, O Lord our God, stir up in us the fire of charity with which blessed St. John Paul II burned ardently as he gave himself unceasingly for your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you and with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God bring you.